Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're jumping back into some more mechanical mastery. So I hope you guys are ready. Now today is World Download Day. We are in episode 20, which means you get access to today's world. But don't forget, there is a template still available over there for you guys who are a supporter of any tier uh, that pretty much has this entire setup right here, but without any of the machines. So it's just a blank template allowing you to start pretty much in this world as is um, with all of the builds and stuff like that. But uh, you're going to be kind of uh, building all of your machines yourself. So both worlds will be available. Of course, you can find that on the discord discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. Uh, if you're a supporter of any tier, no matter what platform you're supporting on. And yet again, I want to thank my amazing supporters. Thank you so very much for the support. It really does help in uh, making these videos uh, much, much better to produce. That's for sure. It definitely helps feed my little kiddos. Come on, I, I do have I do have three little girls. So yeah, thank you guys so much. So without further ado, what is today's episode going to be about? Well, it's going to be a little bit of me explaining some changes that I have made to my SPS and all of that stuff that's going on. And today we're going to be finishing up the final section of the end game that's going to lead to this final star. We should be able to get all of this set up today. Hopefully we can get this production started. Um, so it shouldn't take too much to make these final star shards as we do have everything available here in order to make them. However, we do not have refined radiance. So today refined radiance is going to get crafted. Now let's talk about the SPS. So I pretty much doubled my rate that I am producing antimatter at now. Uh, because I built another turbine, uh, the exact same as this one, and I have it hooked into the exact same pipes. And uh, all I did was I doubled the number right here, the burn rate that I'm producing now. Um, and then I also set up a little bit of a different water container. I basically have a click machine that is clicking onto this supreme black hole, which holds 2 billion. Um, now, it does pull the water back out, but you can see the water level raising and lowering. It seems to be okay with that, and it's only doing it in a couple of the pipes. Um, and that's just an emergency. I don't think we're ever going to need to worry about it, as this does supply the water back into this uh, to match this burn rate. So I pretty much doubled the burn rate, which was 19.2. Now it's eight or 38.4, and we have an exact copy of this turbine, and we're generating 500,000 more power. Uh, basically 548,000 more RF per tick. And then what I'm doing is feeding that extra power back into this um now i do have this pipe currently it is backfilling with plutonium uh but i do have this currently up and running however it does appear i have maximized my waste here probably should hook my waste pipe back up um to this and making sure that those these things don't ever connect um i should just let this build up i don't think i'm gonna it, reach a problem where this it fills too much uh, because this will shut off if we do end up back supplying our waste here. But I think we should be fine. There's enough cable here that that should hold thousands upon thousands of millibuckets anyways. However, I did do the math. Um, at this current rate of producing 0 0.0 or yeah, 0 0.003 millibuckets per tick, I did the math and to get the four full buckets of antimatter, I think it's going to take us about 18 hours of this just constantly running. Uh, which is actually not too bad. It's pretty reasonable. Uh, I think in 18 hours, um, I should be able to get almost everything automated. And by that point, antimatter is going to really be uh, coming into play because it's, it's not useful yet. Um, we still need to set up multiple things, including um, all of the uh, final SAR pieces, as you can see right here. But we also need to, to automate the ultimate singularities. These are not difficult to set up. This is a pretty straightforward process, and we do have all of the stuff for this. However, we're going to have to make them. Uh, thankfully, we don't have to make very many of them, and these only require a thousand items. So as, as of an end game, this actually is pretty doable. It's it's actually really nice. I, I actually like the way this end game is. It's not incredibly repetitive and, uh, and crazily overdone, and it really does force you to go through every mod and the aspects of all of them, which I've really enjoyed th so far in this mod pack. Now, one of the things I'm missing here is the nitro. I do have nitro crafted up right now. It's being crafted. It does take a little bit of time because I don't have the max upgrades for the power onto it, uh, but it only needs like a couple of million RF, I think, in order to produce. Uh, 20 million. It needs 20 million RF to produce. It's not that bad as far as waiting for it. Um, and you do get 16 per craft, including that nether star that gets crafted up in that process. Um, so it's not ridiculous. 
like I said, it just takes some time as of right now because I don't have the cables all fully upgraded. But I will be getting those probably upgraded very soon. Um, so, in the meantime, let's go ahead and start focusing on this refined radiance. Um, so we're going to need a, a multitude of different things. Uh, but the main thing is going to be making this refined mixture, which requires this process of things that we already have, including water. We're going to need an exporter that's exporting these particular items out and it's going to need to be superheated. Thankfully, we have Blaze Cakes automated and a clicker can do that. That's pretty easy. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get that going. Uh, but we also need to figure out how many more things we're going to need so we can judge our space. We're also going to need glowing ingots for this, which is going to be a belt line that is feeding lava onto brass ingots, which means we sh should have brass automated. Yeah, we have brass automated, so that's also not a problem. Um, so that's going to be two setups that are going to be like little create machines. Um, then we're going to need something that is automating the polished quartz. Um, and that's another process. So that's three little multi-block machines that we're going to have to build. And then last but not least, we combine everything into this superheating mixer. So I wonder, can I successfully set up all of that? Like on this, on this wall here? I think I can, and it's all gonna be pretty easy. And all of this is going to lead up until that final star shard, which we should also go ahead and get set up. And that is going to align this wall. It's actually only seven. It looks kind of spread out and like kind of crazy, but it's only seven deployers. And the belt line is gonna be very similar to this setup. So I think for the first two processes of making the polished rose quartz and the glowing ingots, we can probably get this done on the same belt using uh, an exporter for the auto craft. Um, and so what I can have is a spout that's gonna go here, and then I will have a deployer that'll be right here. Um, and so what we should be able to do is bypass, like if it's uh, the initial craft here, the glowing ant, the brass should just bypass uh, because it can't, it doesn't have a recipe that uh, the polisher uses. So we shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, now we do have to supply this with sandpaper, so we just set up an auto craft for that. And then of course for lava, we've done this many of times. We are going to use the crucible uh, for this, and we're just going to send that here. Actually, you know what? We might, um, with this crucible right here, I might be able to use an exporter um, and detect the fluid that's in it and use the fluid that's in this for the automation of this. Yeah, let's let's actually do that. Um, I'll just take a, let's see, storage. And we can put an external storage onto this and read. So this right here will have an output. Never have to worry about it inputting. And we'll make sure to set this priority to one and make sure the, um, the mode is set to fluids. And that should work out perfectly. And then we don't have to worry about building another one of these because these are really fast on their own. Um, so now we should have lava and use an exporter. Let's craft up a bunch of those. And yeah, we should just be able to export the lava straight into here from refined storage. It'll make that a lot easier. Now I have almost everything ready to go. I have that set up. So let's go ahead and set the polished quartz. I do need to craft this and make sure to set it up here. By the way, these crafters are so fast with speed upgrades and they already are eight times faster than the base. Whew, they insta-craft. It is pretty ridiculous. But what we need here is to say not to send this sandpaper. We just want it to send this. I'll just supply it with sandpaper. So that's one craft out of the way. And now this craft, we don't actually want to send it fluid because we're constantly sending that machine fluid. And so there we go. That should be the two crafts that I need. And uh, we'll go ahead and give this a test. Um, I, I just have to provide some power, some create power to these machines. Um, this is gonna need a little bit of power and then this needs power and it should be able to, we should be able to get it off of here. Now, yet again, I'm gonna be using belts in a funky way, but they're a lot cheaper than using like uh, gearboxes and shafts. So I'm actually gonna be just connecting like this. And as you can see, we're powering multiple things vertically and it looks kind of clean when it's uh, all behind everything. And you can see I just added it in here. Um, now, of course, the belts, you can make them look nice by just simply adding some casing to them. And uh, we'll hide the case and everything like that. And everything looks pretty nice and smooth. So now that it has power, let's test it out. Let's see. Can we, per can we make glowing ingots? 
Let's make 10 of them. Will it bypass the first part and then go straight to here? It does. As, as you can see, we're waiting on that. So we're going to need speed upgrades to make sure this exports fast enough to keep up. As it does have a little bit of delay. I might actually want to set this up then. Uh, it all depends, actually. I, I don't know. I'm still debating. Because this can only hold a single. It might be better to have a tank that's draining into here constantly. But as you can see, that works. Um, and of course, once those crafts are done, the only problem we're going to encounter is if we have to craft multiple at the same time and it's always pulling the craft. That's when we might end up with a problem. But I think we should be fine. And then, of course, making this should be really easy. Um, polished quartz. Go ahead and make 10 of those. And we'll see. That's going to get done very quickly as well. So, perfect. It seems like this is all working out. And the importer should be importing everything. Now, I'll just hope that combining these things wasn't a bad decision. <laughs> and I'll move on to the next task. Now, for this next setup, we are going to need a mixer and a basin. And I'm using the refine... I'm, I'm going to be making the refined mixture. This is going to go into a tank. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to have to have a way that's pumping water into this. Um, and we're going to be using the refined storage exporter for that. Um, and the way that I need to get this set up is down here, we're going to have a clicking machine that is going to be receiving a export uh, through this. We're going to have an exporter going here, sending blaze cakes, which we do have. So blaze cakes right here. So we're going to make sure that this is feeding this with blaze cakes. Of course, we're going to have to have this superheated, so we need a blaze burner underneath. And if you remember, this will click just like that and keep that nice and going. And then it'll always stay in that uh, condition. Um, but we're going to need an exporter on the back here for fluids. This is going to be sending water to this. So set that to fluids and we'll say water. And everything else should be able to just go to this. No problem whatsoever through an exporter on this side. Um, now, I do want this to go to a tank, and this is where we might have to use fluid filters for this, um, because I don't want to be pulling water out of this into a tank. I want to pull the mixture that it's going to be generating out. And uh, to do that, uh, it's probably best to just generate the liquid first, put a filter on here so we make sure that that's filtered to that uh, particular refined mixture recipe, and then see how exactly we're going to export this out to a tank. So that's, that's going to be a thing. Let's go ahead and get this uh, cabled up here. So that should be fine. As you see, the water is building up. This one's already hooked in. Um, and what are we going to need? So we're going to have to send in gold. Um, and I might want to turn this off for now. Mm, actually, no, it's fine. Let's do gold. That's our first export. And hopefully it doesn't fill all the way up. I'll just pull out, pull all of it out if it does. Uh, we need Mobius fuel. So we'll send the Mobius fuel. Like, all of this is just sort of tedium going into this. Um, glowstone, which thankfully we don't have to process or anything. It's just there. And last but not least, HDPE sheets. Um, which is something that we've been processing. We have quite a few going, and I have it cutting off when it makes over 2,048. So we shouldn't have a problem there. We can always upgrade the machines if we need more of these sheets, if this process happens to take more. Uh, but from the looks of it, it doesn't seem to need anything else. Um, now, it should be processing, however, it has not spun up because we don't have it receiving any power. So, um, let's go ahead and get that. We're going to need a cog for this. Of course, this is connected via a cog. Um, and what we can do is we can actually scale up, take our power from here. And we need to lead this into a gearbox, which I don't have set up just yet. So let's go ahead and get that crafted. There's a single gearbox. And we're going to need this to be a vertical gearbox right here that is going to receive power from the blocks down below. So gearbox right there. And what I should be able to do is still use belts. Um and just move our shafts over. So this should work, no problem. So we have this shaft right here that uh, is able to be connected to. So what I can do is just build off a shaft right here and then just connect these up. 
Um, so yeah, just look, look how simple this can be to move the power around when you don't have to worry about how things look. <laughs> there it goes. Um, and uh, as you can see, it should be processing and now we have our liquid. So let's see, once we have a whole bucket worth of this, I want to try and pull it out with an actual bucket. Um, it looks like it's not quite made it there yet. I want to make uh, stack upgrades for this. So maybe it'll make sure to keep all of these items in. Because I feel like it's it's missing something. It's producing a byproduct. I don't like that. So I don't know if it's just wasting stuff right now. I think it's wasting stuff because it doesn't have the recipe filter put in there. Okay, so now we have the bucket. Oh, goodness. So yeah, we want to make sure that we pull out... Oh, God. It's not letting me pull it out. Tank. Maybe I can pull the fluid out of a tank. There's a lot to this. Okay. There we go. We have the refined mixture. And now we can probably use a bucket. No? Okay, so we're going to need a filter then. I'm guessing a regular filter. We'll have to get it done because... For some reason, it's not recognizing this is a fluid. Interesting. Why is it not letting me filter here? There's a filter slot. Click with an item to set, but there's no bucket, so I can't set the filter. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that was maybe an issue with CubeJS. Is this, no, this is create chromatic return. Huh. Okay, let's see. Maybe we can get the stack upgrades and we'll make sure. But I, I was hoping to be able to set the filter to that, but apparently I can't. So what's happening here is because I can't set a filter... It is trying to uh, produce these zinc nuggets from just water that's being heated. Um, and that's where I'm getting this zinc for some reason. And I need to be able to set this filter, but I can't reset. I just can't set the filter because for some reason this add-on mod doesn't let me set the filter, oddly enough. So I think what I need to do is go ahead and get this tank placed in. It, this is causing some really weird issues for me because of the way that I know Create's supposed to work. And now it's thus causing this weird issue where I'm going to have to, I guess, make sure to pull out those items that it's generating from the base water. Um, okay, so I'll have this tank hooked in and we are going to use the pipes mod. Uh, and to use the pipes mod, I do need a pipes wrench and I need an advanced upgrade to be able to set a filter. Um, and so what I want to do is make sure this is only accepting this fluid. Uh, now, right now, it's only going to put in that fluid because it has nowhere for water to go, which is really nice. But what if this runs out of fluid? Well, we need to define and tell it, hey, do not, which by, by the way, we need to set it to blacklist. Do not put water in here. Um, I don't know if I can set specifically a water bucket. Let's see. I have to tell it, hey, do not accept water. Um, so make sure to blacklist that from pulling in there. Um, and so that should only accept that now. However, I, gu I guess if it builds up to 64, it will no longer... Yeah, I guess it'll no longer continue to make those items. So I guess I don't really have to worry about it too much. If this stops and backs up, that's when we're going to have a problem. So now after that, I do have my external storage on here, uh, which is surprisingly detecting it, even though we were having that weird thing where it's like, is it a fluid? Is it not? I have no idea. So hopefully it uh, will detect this all as a, a fluid and allow me to use it. Otherwise, we're going to be piping it over to our setup instead of using the refined storage. Now, my next set of tasks are going to be combining all of this stuff that we generated into making this uh, uh, chromatic compound. So we do need uh, this powdered obsidian. So I'm going to have to create a recipe for that. Everything else we just created the autocraft for. Um, so it should send three at a time, three at a time, and, and make the, the auto craft for it in order to produce this inside of a mixer. So uh, with that, I think I'm going to use sort of the same thing with uh, create. I'm going to use a belt line and get that all set up. Now for this crushed obsidian setup, uh, I'm not actually going to go with one. Instead, I'm going to go with 16 and I'll set that. And then we should receive 16 as an output. 
But I want to do it, uh, make sure it does the craft 16 at a time anytime it does the pattern request. Um, I think that will be more efficient for these particular crushers um, and should hopefully get things uh, working a little bit better. Now, this is producing redstone. Thankfully, we don't use this very much, actually. Um, so the production of redstone doesn't happen this way a lot. So I think I can just put that in there. And that should be more than enough to get this up and rolling. Um, now, th now that we have that, um, I was thinking, I, I don't actually need belts. I thought I was going to be using belts more for this setup. Um, but b believe it or not, I, I should just be doing the same sort of thing that's going on up here. Where it's kind of this weird looking janky thing that's going to be sending items from one to the other. Um, so I could probably get by with this. Having both of these containers set up here, two mixers, right, that are going to be superheated. Um, blaze burners. It looks like I'm going to have to craft another blaze burner. Uh, but we're going to have the blaze burners here that's connected to a clicker that's doing the same thing that we just set up before. That's going to keep these both superheated. I'm working on these exporters here. I got everything set it up here before I, uh, I actually turn it on. But I was thinking <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, wait a minute. Uh, how am I going to get the fluid into this if I can't define the fluid with a bucket because there's no bucket? So, yeah, this is not going to work. Um, this particular setup here, we're going to have to actually physically pipe this over to this machine. Um, so, yes, I should be able to get by with using the fluid pipes. Um, fluid pipes are actually really nice. They just they have an ugly texture, I think. Um, but, yes, I should be able to just connect this back through here and back into the back of this and then use my cable uh, to pull from that tank. Doesn't even have to be fast, I don't think, in this particular setup. We just need to make sure to get it over here and unfortunately I couldn't use refined storage for that. Um, and then the exporter here, it just needs to have this chromatic compound here. And I think I'm going to have to have the chromatic compound um, this, this I would have had on autocraft, but I, I think this is just going to be set up on the same system that I had before where it keeps a certain amount in stock. Um, and then of course on each side, we will have importers that are going to be importing, which I should have right here. They're going to be, uh, pulling back in our ingredients. So. This is pretty much ready to go. Now we got to make sure on the importer that we are whitelisting chromatic compound. And then on this side, we got to make sure we're right, right whitelisting the, uh, the radiance material on here. What is it? Refined radiance. There we go. Make sure we are whitelisting that. Um, and now all of the items should fill up in here. And... We just got to get this turned on and mixing, and I think we're ready to go. So here we are. The automation has uh, begun and is now starting and working just fine. So we are now automating refined radiance. It's not producing it insanely fast, uh, but it is fast enough, and I can now clean everything up. I pretty much have the importer shut off here. So once we have 64 refined radiance, it's going to shut this off. This is the importer basically not allowing any more of the chromatic compound to be uh, sent back into the system. So that should be perfectly fine. And now I get to cover up the back and make it look a little bit nicer, hopefully. So for the final star thing products or the final star shard production, we are right here at the end. Um, so it's just a belt that's running through here. I have it connected to the back to seven deployers because that's what we're actually going to need. And uh, exporters, really, that's uh, pretty much it. We're just going to need a bunch of exporters up on the top. All of these exporters are going to be telling it to export uh, all of the items needed here. So the refined radiance, the nitro crystals, the precision mechanisms. And what I want is I want these to just fill up with the 64 that they can hold. And I think that's going to be perfectly fine. Um, because of the way we have all of these particular things set up, this should be quite easily done. It will stop our EMC production for just a moment. Uh, but after that, it's going to be done. And then what we're going to do is upon request for a final star shard, what we should be able to do is say, hey, I want to craft one of these and I will do the manual craft to get this done. Um, so we'll have 64 nitros in here, 64 of the refined radiance, and then we'll also have a backup of however much I have assigned, hopefully 64 or whatever that's going to be building up of like mechanisms and nitro crystals inside of our inventory. 
The only thing that gets requested out of this system is the nitro crystals. Everything else is made. Um, so I just have to define that, right? So inside of each one, oh my gosh, I'm going to have to go in and essence. And we should go ahead and just get these done first. Um, I don't, I, I think it actually has to go in this particular order as well. Like, uh, I, I think they would skip automatically if they didn't have the individual piece. Um, but I want to put them in the order that's shown here. And let's actually see. If I do that, that means this stuff actually needs to be on this side. Because I have the belt going the opposite direction. I don't know if this matters. It does look like it is going from left to right normally here, like this. So the first step needs to be the refined radiance. The last step needs to be this essence. Okay, so we are doing it correct. Uh, no, essence needs to be down here. Okay, so this essence, then it's going to go the yellow essence, then the blue essence or regular essence, and then last but not least, the basic. And then this is going to be our precision mechanism. So we should be able to get that in there. And then the next is going to be nitro crystals. So we'll make sure you get the nitro crystals in there. And last but not least, the refined radiance that we are producing. Perfect. So once we get this hooked up, it should be just about ready to go. All I'm going to need is a crafter. And it doesn't have to be a crazy crafter. I'm just going to go with this. Um, and then an importer is another thing we're going to need. So crafter, importer. Uh, and the crafter is going to go on this barrel. This is going to be the first barrel to send the item out. Um, and then what we need is because I'm using two barrels here, we're going to need a logistical transporter. And I could probably get away with the ultimate logistical transporter. Although Refined Storage is giving me this problem where for some reason it's making it hard for me to, uh, to pull the items out of the inventory. But what we need to do is make sure that that gets transferred. And uh, so the rotation goes here. We need to make sure this goes out this way. And so this will be mighty fast at doing it. And then that will restart the entire thing. So crafter will go over here. Make sure we have a crafter. We do. Like I said, I have to like reopen the grid for some reason. There's like so many processes I think happening. It's causing it to have a, have a fit. Okay. So there's that. And then last but not least, we want a importer that is going to import particularly from here, and it will be the final shard. Um, that should hopefully work. <laughs> I hope anyways. Um, all of this work leading up to this moment, right? And hopefully we have enough. I just got to get the cables get everything plugged in. I've turned it on. I'm just slowly waiting for the walls to come collapsing around me. I hope I have everything done. I can see them behind me. They are now correctly where they belong. We just have to make sure that we get 20 of them in there. There's 64, 64, 64. And this is still building up as the refined radiance is kind of slow. Um, not really much I can do about that other than like maybe having these automatically be produced. It does seem like it is working, though. Now, like I said, the only thing that needs to be crafted up is the nitro. So if I take these out of the hand, put them back in, uh, let's make sure to have that on craft. So that should just go ahead and start a craft until that fills up. And there we go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Our entire playthrough thus far, hours of work led up to making this one shard. Ooh, there went uh, a wither that just spawned in. Oh, it actually makes the sound? That's interesting. I didn't think it would make the sound. But there it goes. Yeah, it's in another dimension, so... Ooh, spooky. But at this point, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to make the autocraft for this. And uh, the odd thing is, is it's going to look like this, but all we have to do for this craft is say, hey, nether star equals final star. And this should work while not being insanely fast because it's not all sped up to be incredibly fast and surprisingly running off of some of the smallest uh steam generators that i've used and still being able to manage all of this um it should now work uh so let's put this in this will put it into the barrel allowing that to be the first thing out um now 
here's the thing. I do want to put a filter. That's the last thing I need. I want a filter here. And I want this filter to be a deny list. And I want it to filter the final star and not let the final shard go out of the barrel, which I think is over here I have the importer on, but really I need to have the importer on that side now that I look at it. So I need to move this stuff and I don't need all of this extra finicky cable. And yeah, it is uh, there's a lot heading over here. Yes, I need this, this barrel right here to have the importer on it. Um, now the importer also needs to have the final star and it needs to be in whitelist mode to make sure that all of that functions. There we go. And have I trapped myself? I have trapped myself indeed. Okay. All of this final prep to make sure and to, to see if this actually functions. Oh boy. Okay. So this filter deny list, um, and we want to make sure that goes here. So that way that will not send it out, making the importer work a little bit easier. Um, and put this in. Okay. There's the pattern and let's craft one. A lot of stuff. It shows that it's going to need to craft this for some reason. I think it's just for the nether star itself. It needs all of this stuff. So it's going to have to make the wither. It's going to have to kill the wither to make the nether star. And then once it has the nether star made, it will send the nether star through here, which will go through all of these processes 20 times. And then that produces one of the shards that we're going to need. Just one. There it goes. It just summoned the wither. Oh boy. <laughs> the anticipation. Oh wait, there it goes. Wait, wait, why is it not working? Um... Why is it not? Why is it not pressing them? Come on now. What did I do wrong? Um, it shows 20 times. It should be deploying the red. It should be deploying everything. Why is it not? Uh, why is it not initializing the deployment? Maybe it's because it's missing the first deployer here, but this deployer works. So why would this deployer not work connected to that? Hmm. I want to try maybe tossing this by hand right here. Huh. It's not recognizing. Oh, the deployers aren't powered, are they? Oh, they're not powered. I'm a dork. I'm a dork. I thought I was powering them from the back here. Completely not powering them at all. Oh, I need uh, an entire... I got... Oh, I got to do this. Oh my gosh. The satisfaction just up and ruined there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to access the barrel and put that in. There we go. Now it's making all the individual pieces and it's going to do this now 20 times. But of course, we have all the time in the world to wait, right? Because we have 18 hours plus to wait into this world. <laughs> so yeah, we have plenty of time to produce these. The process has just finished and that means we have a final star shard. And thus, we get no reward, sadly. Wow, out, out of all of that, you, I feel like I should get a reward or something. Okay, well, no reward, but the satisfaction of automating a shard. Ah, <sighs> it feels really good. Definitely feels good. So, uh, I can definitely process another one and get another one started. I have plenty of nitro, and so I'm just going to need to constantly, I would love to have a bit of these done um, because we are going to need quite a few of these. It looks like we can easily make a blaze cake with this particular setup, which honestly wouldn't be too hard. It's just a hundred times. The blaze cake though, we really don't need because we have blaze cakes automated. So this particular process is really unnecessary, I think, right? Yeah, pretty unnecessary. For some reason, um, I think it's because we don't have crafters on there. Oh, that's right. I didn't, I never put the crafters on the back of the blaze cakes. Um, but yeah, we have this all automated. Every, I mean, all of these processes are working. It's just going to take me some tinkering to kind of make sure that I'm doing the crafts and stuff and getting those running. Yeah, same for this one back here. I don't think I put craft upgrade on it. But there we go. Now everything's back the way it should, and that's producing, and 
Oh, I can just sit back and smile for now and wait for antimatter. So I'd like to ask you now, towards the end here of the series, what do you guys, what have you thought so far of this pack and its progression thus far, if you've watched uh, to this point? Um, it's actually been pretty quick on my end, and I'll have to say that so far I've really enjoyed it, and the ending of this actually doesn't look too bad. Um, I've played a lot of packs where singularities were a, a grind on you, and it was really repetitive, and you just had to t basically make more and more of the machines to increase more and more and more, basically turning the game into a clicking machine. Um, I really like the, pa the way this pack sort of uh, made you use automation tasks in an interesting way. And I really like that it it, uh, it definitely pushed me through interesting ways of using refined storage that I don't think I'd ever uh, have used. Uh, so I've definitely learned a lot and it's it's kind of improved my automation skills, I think. Uh, this one pack solely has improved it. And uh, I've definitely learned a little bit about, a little bit more about Create as well and the uh, different kinds of styles that I could set up for automation because I've really used a lot of Create in this pack and I uh, had a lot of fun doing it. So of course, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge, huge thumbs up. Also, remember, be sure to check out if you're a supporter of any tier or you're looking to become a supporter and uh, supporting the channel in a financial way, feeding the kiddos, paying for the servers, basically, and uh, and the server management and all that fun stuff that gets kind of expensive. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for those of you who do support. Like I said, if you're looking for it, join the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and get access to all of the sub servers and fun stuff that we do over there. We've been playing Sky T as of the time of this recording, and I've been playing that and having a blast uh, with everybody. So thank you guys so much yet again. And uh, with that being said, it's time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that beautiful thanks is going to go to Spider Chaos 667 Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting in yet again, one of the best ways possible. Guys, thank you so very much for watching thus far. Can't wait to get the singularities automated and sort of wrap up this pack, which is going to be happening very, very soon. And uh, yeah. So, guys, if you've enjoyed and you're ready to see more, be sure to click that subscribe button. Guys, I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.